All right, hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, but we have one ready for you now. In this tutorial, we're going to build a fun little demo product that I have been working on over the last several months. In thinking about ideas for this project, I wanted to build an app with some sort of real-time feature, meaning that data is immediately synced from the server to all of the connected front-end client applications. A little over a year ago, I remember there was much ado made about a New York City mayoral election being a ranked choice vote, combining the desire to make a real-time application demo to solve the problem of making decisions more quickly among friends or indecisive friends, I decided to make this here app called Ranker, which I will now present. All right, so this is called Ranker. Of course, with all tech companies, you need to remove vowels. I should remove this A, quite frankly. It turns out this is actually a company, so like, let's not get ourselves sued or in trouble by uh, really pushing it here. So let's create a poll, for example. That's how this app works, and we'll say, uh, where should we eat? You know, friends always have a hard time deciding where to eat, so let's just make it much simpler by making an app. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so here's Jacob, and he's going to create a poll. Now, when you create a poll, you'll see a few things. First, you'll see the, the main topic. You'll see the poll ID here, which you can click to copy. And you can see there's a coloration of the characters versus the digits, so you know if it's like a zero or an O. Very nice to do. And then you copy and send this poll to your friends, and they can click Join Existing Poll. And when they join a poll, let's call this person Billy, for example. And uh, yeah, sorry, that's the code that goes up there, not their name. Let's go the code and Billy. And they'll join. And when you join, you can see that they show a number two for the number of players in this little box. And if you click this box, ah, you can see the names of the players. And you can see that I spelled Billy poorly. So let's go to this third window, and you'll see the name added instantly. And this number increased instantly when they joined the poll. So this time, we'll make sure to put the poll number there. And this is Juan joining the poll. And unfortunately, I couldn't fit four browser windows in this width. Some of the browsers don't have a good enough width, but, you know, whatever. Let's open the Brave browser here, and we'll join the poll. And this person I want to call Hyatt. Extremely fancy. Hyatt. All right, Hyatt joins the poll. I'm an extremely dorky mood today. Uh, here we go. So you can see any of these people can leave the poll if they don't like it. And there's just a note here saying that only the admin, Jacob, can start the poll, which Jacob will do right now. And, oh, first of all, before starting the poll, we need to actually vote or provide nominations. This could use some UI work, but oh well. So Jacob wants to nominate uh, El Castillito, Little Taqueria. All right, and then he wants to nominate, you know, uh, Mr. Kebab. Or you could have tacos al pastor and you'd get the best of both worlds. All right. Nonetheless, here comes the next person. This is Billy, wants to nominate in and out. Okay, true Californian right there. All right, here we go. And this is Juan. And Juan wants to nominate Apollo Restaurant. Not Apollo Burger. That's a different thing. All right, Apollo Restaurant. And uh, Lemongrass. You know, maybe a Thai, some sort of Southeast Asian restaurant. Delicious. All right, and then let's open up our final browser here, and this will be Hyatt. And uh, Hyatt will nominate a generic hot chicken. Very, very nice name there. I'm very amused with myself. All right, and you can see when you nominate the thing, it turns into like a light orange. And when someone else provides a nomination, it turns into like a gray color. And you see the admin here can like veto or take out the nomination by clicking X. We won't do that now. All right. With some nominations provided, this admin is going to start voting and watch as all these screens instantly go to the next screen. So they receive a piece of state that's basically like bam, update, and they all get to vote. So let's have Jacob. Uh, he's going to vote for his own nomination, El Castillito. And oh, lemongrass sounds like a good idea. And, you know, you can never go wrong with burgers. It's very cheap. All right. Going to confirm that he's done voting. And then this one is Billy. I just realized I should probably put their own name. Like, you are Billy here. But 
I guess in real life, you know who's who you are holding your own phone, so maybe that's not necessary UI. All right, so Billy wants to go with in and out and then maybe Apollo, and then El Castillito. Votes, bam. All right, so this also shows live how many people have voted, and you can see that the non-admin people is just has a note saying they're waiting for Jacob to end the poll, or finalize it, and Jacob can end the poll now, or wait for all the votes to come in. And say someone disappeared, they could just end the vote and say, you know, such and such friend is flaky and didn't answer, so I'm gonna end the poll. All right, I'm really just, you know, I'm going off today. This is, tutorial is going to be really long. I hope you like banter. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Juan over here is going to vote for Apollo Restaurant and Lemongrass tie, and maybe El Castillitos third. All right, and this might not even be Juan, actually, because I keep jumping browsers. And this last person, Hyatt, is going to vote for Castillito. And then hot chicken, generic hot chicken, I should say. And then Apollo. Mm, Apollo, so good. And when they confirm votes, everyone's votes in, and this person can end the poll. And then I have a bug here, which we'll fix when they confirm. This doesn't close. But anyway, basically what happens in ranked choice voting is all the like items that didn't get any votes, like poor Mr. Kebab. I mean, what's what's wrong with people? Why wouldn't you want kebabs? Like they're the best. But anyway. <laughs> all the all these votes show are the first place votes from each voter and we'll explain this later so basically mr kebab and lemongrass and generic hot chicken got no first place votes but since they got no first place votes and there's no one with a majority of the votes you see el castillito has two of four votes it doesn't have three of four first place votes so until someone gets three of four place votes of uh, four first place votes or there's like a tie that can't be broken the voting goes to a next round. So if I click next, you can see that El Castillito has two, and then In and Out and Apollo have one. There's no way, there's nothing left with like less votes. So Castillito will win in this case. And I guess I didn't explain that well, but we'll have a whole section on rate choice voting, which is actually quite confusing. So that's it for the application. So before we move on too far and go over this application overview diagram here, I just want to mention that this is not a beginner friendly tutorial or project. Probably you've noticed that already, um, but if not, this would be like a year long course and I have a job and I'm just doing this for fun and I'm not a saint. No, okay, I'll stop complaining. This is a pleasure. But anyway, I expect you to know how to create a basic front end application in React or even it could be another front end framework. I just want you to be able to use like NPM and Node, maybe have built on the back end an Express application or a Vue, React, Solid.js application on the front end. If you're delving into Solid, you're probably already way into front end and don't need this tutorial. But anyway, I also hope that you'll be able to install Docker or Docker Desktop on your computer so that you can run Docker Compose. So you'll need to be able to run the Docker Compose command to run the Docker container that we'll go over here in a little bit. Also, it would be nice to have a knowledge of TypeScript. You can see that we're going to be using it here in both the front end and back end. I'm not an expert at TypeScript, but just a basic knowledge, and I think you'll be able to track with the tutorial. So let's go over this a little more. You can see here in this little orange box, our client will be using React with TypeScript, and that's the little app we just showed that you saw in the browser. And for state management, it will be using something called Valtio. I don't know if you've heard of this. I wanted to learn more about it, which is why we're using it with this app. For routing, we're going to be using something called Wouter. Although this is also more or less just to learn as this app may not even really require a router. For communicating in real time, both on the front end and the back end, to send that poll data back and forth, like when a user enters the poll or when they voted, we're going to be using Socket.io. For the server, we're going to be using something called Nest.js, which is a TypeScript first sort of framework for structuring your Node.js applications. I kind of feel like it structures applications like Angular does on the front end, or perhaps ASP.NET Core does for you know, C-sharp backend applications. Unfortunately, a lot of the tutorials I've seen don't really combine both a REST API with Socket.io, but this one definitely will. 
And the REST API is mainly used for authorizing a user. So basically you can create a new poll and then that returns a sort of token to the client to say, hey, you're the admin who created the poll. This is your name. You're authorized to vote for yourself. And a similar thing happens when you join a poll or let's say you reopen the website on your browser, it will immediately try to rejoin the poll if you have a valid token. For the database, we're going to be using Redis and we'll be using something called Redis JSON, which allows you to structure your data kind of like a, well, like a JSON object, I think it's in the name. And this will be held inside of a basic Docker container, which will just run with Docker Compose. And I'll have a nice script set up for you ahead of time to run this. I now want to give a quick little demo of how you can get started on this application. First, you'll need to go to my repository, Jacob SN Goodwin, uh, called Ranker Course. And there is a readme here that will tell you how to get started. Of note is if I go back up, sorry for the quick scroll, you'll see that there is a starter branch and then there will be a numbered branch for each of the tutorials. So this one will be 01 application overview. And each of these branches will hold the state of the application after uh, the tutorial. So 01 application overview will have all the changes after this video is recorded and then I push the branch. In this case, I kind of pushed the branch, I think. But anyway, so uh, we have this starter branch, which is really what you need to start from right now. And if you want to start with us later on, you can follow these instructions, but for a future branch. All right, so this is just saying that I have my YouTube tutorial. This link actually doesn't exist yet because I haven't uploaded this video, but it will. So to get started, what I recommend is you use dgit, which is basically like, a way to get the code without any of my code history. You could also run git clone. And then say you wanted to start along later in the course, we're gonna do a lot more back end work first, but say you wanted to just do the front end work, you would basically just run this degit command, but with the branch number pound, and then replace the curly braces with the branch number uh, or branch name, I should say, that you want to download. And there's some instructions for getting started. So let's just go through this right now. All right, so I'm in a folder just called test ranker because I already have folders for this, obviously. But what you would do is just run this dgit command and let's make this font a little bit bigger. And uh, yeah, and so this will clone the repository. And then you would just be able to uh, open it in the ranker course folder. So let's just run an LS. Actually, no, it downloads to the folder. Oh, this is even better. I think you would actually do dgit and then a folder name for the argument here if you wanted to put it in a specific folder. This brings it into this folder. So make sure you uh, make your folder you want to bring this into first. I've now opened the project that I just dgitted, <laughs> if that's a term. And you can see that we have some top level files here. First, we have like an MVMRC, which basically you can use if you have node version manager, you can open up a terminal and then just type in NVM use and it will use this version of node so that you're in sync with me. Then we have very importantly, a package JSON file. And this is one at the root of the project. We're going to make use of NPM workspaces. So we'll also have package.json's in our client application in the client folder and within the server folder. You can see that we have a little command here, uh, start, and this basically runs the whole application. What it's going to do is it's going to concurrently run Docker Compose script, which is an NPM command up here. You can see that it is Docker Compose up in detach mode. So this will end up starting a Redis container. This is used by this docker compose yaml file and this will set up that redis json image or container that i had previously mentioned if we go back you can see that we also have a command to start only the client application in develop mode by running npm run dev dash dash or hyphen hyphen workspace equals client and so that means it's basically going to run npm dev of this package.json file in the client directory. And we can do something similar for the server, except the server is going to use a command called wait on, 
and it's going to wait on the TCP port 6379, the default Redis port, so that we can uh, make sure that Redis is started before we start our server. And then it's going to do uh, run start dev for the server, which also has its own. If we go here and package JSON, it has its own start dev command, which starts nest. Let's go back to the root package JSON file. Uh, of note also is that we will be using Storybook, and this is going to be a tool to prototype components. Now, we're not actually going to build or work with Storybook, but if we go to the client application in the source folder, components then, you can see that I created a bunch of UI components already for you, but we're going to be able to like play with these and get comfortable with them via this storybook. I wouldn't worry too much if you don't know about it now. And if you're a worrier, I can't help you. You're probably already Googling it. So if we stick here in the client application, this is just a bare bones React project with some TypeScript React components here. It has a base page called Welcome TypeScript. And it's got a utility file here for like fetching data. This is just to use. This is just a wrapper around fetch. Once we run npm install, these red squigglies will go away. In fact, let's do that. So we're in the root folder right now. So let's just run npm install. You'll need to do that too. And hopefully this will work. This is just importing an environment variable. And we're going to have a basic file to run a welcome page, which is in this pages folder. We have some global CSS. We'll put some global types here. It'll be clear why we need this later. This is for Valtio, uh, just a little kind of helper type for deeply nested structures. And we just render our React application here. All right. And this is using Vite for the development tool. You may be familiar with Webpack. This is an ES module based, uh, I don't even know if you call it file bundler, but development tool. We have some config files like ESLint, Prettier, and environment variables are defined in .n. We're going to be using Tailwind CSS, which is here. And this is a basic config, and we'll see more of this later. And then if we close the client folder, let's go to the server. You can see we also are using Prettier and ESLint and a TypeScript. So the config is very similar. And then we just have a simple main TS file right now. And this basically is just going to run an application on port 8080. Or actually, this is saying to accept cores from 8080. Sorry, that means this is saying to accept traffic from our front end application. And then it's going to run on a port that is defined in this .m file, which we get access to via Nest's config service. This is probably a little much right now. But if we look at env here, you'll see the port is 3000. So if we run all this, then we should get a client and a server application running. But first, you must make sure you have Docker running. So make sure you do that. I have a Docker desktop running. So you might you know, check you know, Docker Compose or, or run a Docker container just to make sure you have it. So with all of this in place, you can just run this npm start script so you can just run npm run start or just npm start and this will start both your applications and that docker container there it goes and you can see that you get some logs from the back end saying you have a server on port 3000 and if we open up a browser we should be able to open up on port 8080 all right guys it's been a pleasure to have you back i really look forward to working with you in the next lecture, we're going to get started on creating that REST API inside of the backend of Nest.js. Until then, take care and behave yourselves.